Still water this morning, everybody. It was so beautiful yesterday that Julie came with me today and we came back and hoping that the eagles were here again. We think we saw uh, a young one over there in a tree after we walked by. But um, nothing's in the tree right now. So say good morning, Julie. Good morning. <laughs> Yeah, water's it's really super still. There's no wind, and uh, it's a, it's a beautiful morning. Every morning's beautiful, pretty much. So, oh it's yeah, solar. Oh uh, yeah, commercial. <laughs> <laughs> commercial. It's my break. brother's business. He's a solar engineer. He works out of the Adirondacks and helps people get off grid. Yeah. Solar, uh, solar power. And he's been hey. off grid for 20, 25 years, something like that. Natalie's probably watching. Hi, Natalie. Hey Kurt. Kurt. Alright, we're gonna let you look at the scene here. Oh, That's what's that? Hawk. A little yeah, I think that it's was like a kestrel or something. Big for a kestrel. Oh yeah, it is. It might be a, a falcon. Peregrine? Mm, I don't know. And oh no, that was great. That was an osprey. Osprey. That yeah. was an osprey had to. Yep. Oh, there's so many so many birds here. We heard loons when we got here, right? Mm hmm Yep. So I'm going to talk really low and slow because normally I, I talk. there's babies over there. I hear a squawking of some kind of raptor. Yeah. It's very peaceful here. What's that? Oh, those are seagulls. It's like bird paradise over here. Bird watcher's paradise. Hey, Beth's watching. Hey, Beth. Chip was already up and got some pictures of the sunrise this morning before me. Chip's got some awesome photos. Hey, Pete. I'm not going to say as much this morning. It's just because it's too beautiful. I don't have to say anything. It, yesterday's um, yesterday's uh, video, a lot of people weren't able to see because... I was singing to the wait, and Facebook said I took the song, so... Um, can't I have music today. Can't have music today. <laughs> no, yeah. It feels good to have music, but we'll have to just sing a cappella. Hey, Sonia. This is Sonia from Ireland. April. Sam. Hey, Sonia. Love you, Sonia. Sister Bear. We'll be coming. We'll be coming there soon. Did she know, know the story? Maybe no, we should. we yeah. shouldn't really say... No. <laughs> you gotta test, text her. Yeah, Sonia, we'll be coming over. Paul bought a, a little cottage in uh, up by Leitrim, in Leitrim, up near Drum Shambo. If you heard that, Sonia, so we'll be coming to visit more often. Morning, April. Hey, Jenny. Yeah, listen to the birds. We're going to crawl over here and show you the mountains. Yeah, I didn't get it. It's a bit cloudy here today, but it's still pretty. The clouds are cutting off the tops of the mountains. Yeah. There's High Point. We live right on the other side of that. There's a seagull coming right towards us. It wants to know if we have any french fries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had french fries yesterday and they tasted gross. Uh, guess what I had yesterday? I had coconut custard pie. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hey, Chip. Chip, you beat me up here this morning. I got, I ran out of the house late. Yeah. We saw the red coming and then it disappeared when we got here. But it's it's still beautiful. And it's so still. I've really never seen it this still. There's always a little bit of a wave on the upper basin, especially. I've seen the lower basin still, but the... Yeah, people, this is only... Uh... Hey, Charlie. Hey, Sally. Dave. Uh, this is only like uh, 10 minutes from our, from the buses, right? Yep. Yeah, love that mountain right there. What's that one over there? Um, 
the one with the little knob in front of it? Yeah. That's Big Sam. Little mountains in front of that. Follow that ridge over, you hit Wittenberg. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to Cornell. And then behind that, usually when the cloud's not there, you can see slide peeking out. Yeah. What's that one over there? I think that's Tyskenite. Yeah. And that might be Mount Tobias, I think. I ran those over there, but I, I wasn't at the top of the mountain guy. I like to be midway. I like to be where all the life was. And I never really wanted to look off a mountain and see anything. Because when you look out in the distance, all you see are the, uh, right, yeah. houses and stuff. And if you go into a mountain, go into a mountain. Go into the belly of it. You want to say anything, honey? <laughs> I'm not even awake yet. I got her out of bed and said, come on, we got to go see the eagles. We had like a little kid on Christmas. <laughs> I wanted to see the eagles. Too. Yeah. I actually think that was one over there. Yeah. That's it, um, the mature one. Can't do a long video today because um, my battery's not totally charged. But uh, So just wanted to, to wish everybody well and hang in there. Everybody's doing it. By now, we should be getting the uh, getting used to it. And maybe that, that panic is uh, settling down and uh, we're, getting, uh, we're getting meditative and reflective and getting things done at home and uh that's that's all positive and uh hi chip hey chip yeah hi, <laughs> glad i'm here too <laughs> what time were you up here this morning chip you must have you had some nice red pictures he sent me pictures of the sun sunrise oh, yeah. yeah yeah i like taking pictures too but i like sleeping in better <laughs> yeah Chip, you've been your photos have been on my mind. Chip had this unbelievable photo of an eagle catching a fish. At the same time it grabbed the fish, a, a water snake had been grabbing the fish. So the eagle is pulling the fish and the snake out of the water, and then the snake let go. It's just an unbelievable photograph. I mean, you no, know, that should be a National Geographic. It's just so unbelievable. Um, he's got some awesome photos. Make He's, the coffee table book. He did. Yeah, he, yeah, he, trying to talk him into it. But we're gonna go back over here. I was kind of hoping I'd hear the chirping of the eagles, but that's okay. Eagle's got his own things to do today. That's Eagle's. Yeah. There's some ducks way out there. Yeah. There's nothing more peaceful than water for some reason. And uh, we're isolating right now. There's nobody here but us. But we have a whole world in front of us and a whole sky above. And is, you know... We're blessed. We're blessed to be here. So, uh, uh, what do you got to say, people? I'm never really looking, but today I am. Hey, Doreen, good morning. Cheryl, good morning. Hey, Chris, good morning. Go ahead, Julie. Hey, everybody, good morning. <laughs> and Lisa, <laughs> it is the spot. Can't wait to have some coffee. Um, hey, there's my cousin Buster. Hey, Buster. Hey, Buster. Buster Balls. Yep. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Jennifer. Yeah, everybody should be settling in now, getting used to this. You know, well, we're four months into this day. And go, we ain't going to want to pry ourselves out of our houses or <laughs> out of our, our isolation. We're going to be like, um, yeah, I don't think so. Hey, if you guys ever get a chance, there's a great documentary that was put out a while back called the power of community and it's about cuba when russia pulled out of cuba and they couldn't get any uh food or fuel or fuel their world shut down and they didn't know what to do and it's a beautiful documentary 
The community just had to come together and they brought the old ones out to teach them how to farm properly, how to farm, you know, in the old school ways. How to, how to use oxen to plow fields. They were like, oh my God, the tractor packs the soil and the oxen aerates it. Its mm-hmm. hooves don't pack it down. Right. And they planted plants together instead of in rows separate because all the plants use different parts of the, the soil and they protected each other from, you know, pests in, in instead of using pesticides. So they eliminated the use of petroleum-based products almost completely from their system. Yeah, Cuba became the leading uh, organic farm country, I think, at one time because of this. They were put into the situation which they were devastated and then when they got they got together as a community and needed food, the markets didn't have any vet fresh vegetables. So even in the cities, people took up vacant lots and they they planted food and they and they planted gardens and they planted gardens on their balconies and mm-hmm. they shared their food and they developed solar systems. Um solar uh solar power systems that the whole community could use. Um and, you know, heating their water and generating electricity and they just learned how to live off grid yeah so it's a pretty amazing story and and if you're in isolation and and you you can look it up we did right yeah where do we get it on netflix uh yep i think no i actually just googled it It was on youtube if you google it the power of community uh, uh cuba um how how they got through uh without oil and fuel. Yeah, being they were isolated from the rest of the world. Yes. And what the US had embargo so they couldn't get anything from the US. Right, and if anybody tried to bring them stuff from other countries, the US wouldn't do business with them. So they had nothing and they and they they survived and in the end of, end result they said, "Hey, we found oil off in the Gulf." And they're like, "Well, we don't need it." Yeah, they <laughs> sold it to everybody else. They we, sold we, it. Yeah. Hey, John. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Julie's got a nice voice. It's very soft. Uh, hey, Joe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John Barringer. He's quite a hiker. He, Him and Ralphie Rindak, these guys, they hike all over. Dean Giuliano. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello, Rhonda. Yeah, it's, it's, a, good, it's a good documentary. It's quite, it's quite long, but it's full of information. Yeah. It goes back to talking about uh, what the Carter administration was talking about with the fuel shortage and stuff, mm-hmm. right? Yep. We're going to go over and look at the mountains again. We have to stop burning fossil fuels anyway, as much as we can. Yeah. Let's try and find alternatives. Biodiesel, whatever you call it. Um, oil. Hey, good morning from Ohio. Hey, James. Christine. Hey, Christine. Hey, oh, thanks, hey, Joe. Hey, Beverly. <laughs> thanks, Beverly. Hey, Joe. Hey, Christine. She has a soothing voice, right? She's she was she's a nurse or was a nurse, and I always told her I said she must have been great because her voice is very calming and very healing. I was a labor and delivery nurse for about twelve years, and one of my favorite things to do was to have one-on-one time with the mommies and talk to them and make them feel safe and explain to them everything that was going on because a lot of, you know, sometimes medical professionals just assume that you're just going to trust them and you don't need to know all this stuff and mostly the nurses really need to to tell you what to do or tell you what's going on and answer all your questions and that was my favorite part of the job was just to soothe them and let them know it's going to be okay and that we got their, you know, we got them and talk about what a beautiful baby they're going to have and all that. And that was, you know, I started feeling like teary-eyed thinking about that because I loved that part of the job. Um, I was the doula for my daughter, Kana's birth of my granddaughter. (laughs) Um, And that was the most wonderful experience, I think. Besides having my own children, it was one of the most wonderful experiences I've ever had in my life um, was... And that was a bonding experience for us and watching my granddaughter come into the world and watching my my beautiful daughter (laughs) come into the world, um, become a mommy herself. Yep. Hello from Belgium, Elkie. 
Hey, Elky. So I was, um, yeah, that's, that's how I use my voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, <clears throat> you know, the thing about your voice is if each of you take, take a moment and when you're agitated and when it's a, it's a perfect, this is the study I did on myself. Everything that I'm sharing with you is what I've done work on myself. I felt it more important not to look and judge other people, but to judge myself more. So I started watching and looking and, and listening to myself and, and seeing how I reacted and, and how I reacted in different situations. And, and the one thing I found out that when my voice is in ego, it's very, it's very raspy and it, and it, and it irritates me. Um, but if my voice is in spirit, it has a different sound. Can't wait to meet you too, Sonia. Sonia, yeah. Sonia, Duff bought a little cottage up um, by a lake by Drum Shambo. And um, we will be coming over there often. And um, we'll hope to see you. It's an off grid little cabin. Um, he said it's near a lake with some of the best fishing in Ireland. Um, Hey Megan Malloy Johnson. Hey Megan. Megan grew up up in the hollow. Hey Megan, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the hollow. Right over there. This is for you, Megan. And all those people that came from here. There. West Shokan Bushkill comes down up in there. I gotta make sure I don't drop my phone in the water. <laughs> that would suck. Hey Jeannie. Hey Glenn. Hey, Darlinda. Yeah, that's the voice. Spirit voice is comforting even to me. I hated everybody. If you if you say, man, I can't stand my voice. Listen to your spirit voice. You have two voices. You have one that is spirit that comes from a loving place and it has comfort. And then you have a voice that comes from your head and it's agitated and it's raspy. And you know people that are in their head all the time. Their voice can irritate you. Um... Oh, you still have the place in France, yeah. Awesome. I love France. I used to live in a little town in the Loire Valley called Le Circus de Passavant, and it was very oh, small. Oh, say that, say that again. <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, I feel like Mr. Adams. Oh, Le Circus de Passavant? Oh. <laughs> it means the sarcophagus, sarcophagus, uh, sarcoc what is it, sarcophagus? <laughs> sarcophagus, <laughs> you sarcophagus. Just, you just killed it when you told me the translation. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> hey, Dave. Of the Passavant family. <laughs> Dave and I went to kindergarten, graduated together. Hey, Will. Thank Good you, morning, Juliet. Will. You're, yeah, she likes your voice. Yeah. I like your voice. I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's High Point. So, um, we're basically just chilling today. My mouth is not flapping, and uh, I did a lot of talking, and the eagle and I is, yesterday were having a blast. Yeah. Woo! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was my little baby wolf howl. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Did that just echo? That was Chip. Was it? Chip, did you, Chip, did you just yell? <laughs> Chippy, if, if you just yelled, send me a message back, because I just heard it. <laughs> Woo! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I think Chippy's down there at the building, and he's howling. That's so funny. Oh, thank you, Juliet. Juliet, where are you from? Yeah, Dave. I never liked the top, but I'm, I'm glad you did. Dave's been to the top of all them mountains. <laughs> Somebody said do it again. <laughs> Whoa! Oh! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Good Joe Proctor. Joe. Chip, I think Chip's down there howling. My, 
my my buddy Chip is working as an electrician down here at the reservoir buildings. And that's why he, he got up here early and got some nice shots with his camera of the sunset, of the sunrise rather. And I swear I just heard him, or my voice just echoed down there. I think it echoed. I thought I heard. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yo, the coyotes are so cool. They lo they have a beautiful sound. They are so cool to listen to in the middle of the night. Ch Chip got a, uh, showed me a photo last night of a coyote. That has got to be a wolf hybrid because it, it was the prettiest, and it was, its face was not as narrow and thin, and it was broad, and it's nice to see these different animals in the area coming back. Mm -hmm. Hey, Melissa, you're welcome. Thanks for being here with us. Sometimes hey, we, Paul. Sometimes we sit in um, Hoppy's bus, we're sleeping, or we're half awake, and we hear all these animal noises. We're trying to identify, like, the coyotes and the different kinds of owls and the night birds and the squirrels and chipmunks and... And we hear the 420 gig getting into our food. Oh, the raccoons <laughs> come through and go for our barbecue. We call them 420. Yeah, because they always come at 420 and they're always hungry. <laughs> yeah. Just like Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> My son Griffin likes to eat it and, um, after everybody goes to bed. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we were pots and pans rattling, so we nicked him raccoon. We said his spirit animal is definitely raccoon. <laughs> Which is cool because they're very, very chillax animals and they're very sweet. Good morning from hell. Michigan. Oh. oh. Maybe is that's that a the real, name of a town? Is that the name of a town, Lisa? I hope. Hey, Darlinda. Oh, thank you. And Rhonda. It is. It's gorgeous. Look at that over there. Oh, hello, birdie. The pigeons live underneath or? Yeah. Go back to New York City. Idiots. I like those. I like <laughs> the pigeons. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I hear when I'm up here. Everybody calling those people from city to city. Well, they can't blame the people from coming from city up to here. I can't either. Yeah. The only thing I suggest to, to our city uh, community that comes here to these mountains, which would be respectful and appreciative of the local people. I'm speaking for the locals right now. And... Um, I think everybody's welcome here, but uh, some some people that come here from the weekends are still commuting back and forth to New York City. So they're going back into it, and they're coming here on the weekends to their weekend home. So um, self isolate. Self isolate. Yeah, that you shouldn't be doing. You should pick a place and stay. Um, and if you got a place here and you can stay here, stay here. So, uh, it's hard for people to wrap their heads around not not being able to do what they used to do um, and going to work if they can still work. But if you are going to do that, just completely stay away from everybody. Just drive up, stay in your place. Don't go out to stores. Just make sure you have like hey, delivery or something. You can do deliveries. There's um, Wal Walmart and was it Shoprite? Shoprite. Both do um, in-home deliveries uh, right to your house, so you don't really need to go to the grocery stores, and especially if you are possibly going to put other people at risk because you've been exposed. Yeah, because what's happening, I'm noticing, is people come up on the weekend, they rush to the stores up here, and they think because it's it's a big difference between New York City and the Catskills. So when you come up here, you think, oh, it's not as bad because there's not as many people. Mm. Oh, my uh, people, I got to say goodbye. Julian, I got to say goodbye. We got to say goodbye because his battery's running out. Oh. All right. There. Battery's just about to die, <laughs> and we're going to lose you. So, uh, everybody, uh, be safe, be happy, self-reflect. Take, take advantage of this time to connect with yourself. And then once you make that connection with yourself, you offer something when we come out of this to the universe and it makes the world a better place. Oh. <laughs> All right. You want to say anything, Julie? <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.